In this video, we'll introduce a method that is similar to CART called random forests. This method was designed to improve the prediction accuracy of CART and works by building a large number of CART trees. Unfortunately, this makes the method less interpretable than CART, so often you need to decide if you value the interpretability or the increase in accuracy more. To make a prediction for a new observation, each tree in the forest votes on the outcome, and we pick the outcome that receives the majority of the votes. So how does Random Forests build many cart trees? We can't just run cart multiple times because it would create the same tree every time. To prevent this, Random Forests only allows each tree to split on a random subset of the available independent variables and each tree is built from what we call a bagged or bootstrapped sample of the data. This just means that the data used as the training data for each tree is selected randomly with replacement. Let's look at an example. Suppose we have five data points in our training set. We'll call them 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. For the first tree, we'll randomly pick five data points randomly sampled with replacement. So the data could be 2, 4, 5, 2, and 1, each time we pick one of the five data points regardless of whether or not it's been selected already. Th these would be the five data points we would use when constructing the first cart tree. Then we repeat this process for the second tree. This time the data set might be 3, 5, 1, 5, and 2 and we would use this data when building the second cart tree. Then we would repeat this process for each additional tree we want to create. So since each tree sees a different set of variables and a different set of data, we get what's called a forest of many different trees. Just like cart, random forests has some parameter values that need to be selected. The first is the minimum number of observations in a subset, or the min bucket parameter from CART. When we create a random forest in R, this will be called node size. A smaller value of node size, which leads to bigger trees, may take longer in R. Random forests is much more computationally intensive than CART. The second parameter is the number of trees to build, which is called entry in R. This should not be set too small, but the larger it is, the longer it will take. A couple hundred trees is typically plenty. A nice thing about random forests is that it's not as sensitive to the parameter values as cart is. In the next video, we'll talk about a nice way to pick the cart parameter. For random forests, as long as the selection is reasonable, it's okay. Let's switch to R and create a random forest model to predict the decisions of Justice Stevens. In our R console, let's start by installing and loading the package Random Forest. We first need to install the package using the install.packages function for the package Random Forest. You should see a few lines run in your R console, and then when you're back to the blinking cursor, load the package with the library command. Now we're ready to build our random forest model. We'll call it Stevens Forest and use the random forest function, first giving our dependent variable reverse, followed by a tilde sign, and then our independent variable separated by plus signs, circuit issue, petitioner, respondent, lower court, and unconstitutional. We'll use the data set, train. For random forest, we need to give two additional arguments. These are node size, also known as min bucket for cart, and we'll set this equal to 25, the same value we used for our cart model. And then we need to set the parameter n tree. This is the number of trees to build. And we'll build 200 trees here. Then hit enter. You should see an interesting warning message here. 
in cart we added the argument method equals class so that it was clear that we're doing a classification problem as i mentioned earlier trees can also be used for regression problems which you'll see in the recitation the random forest function does not have a method argument so when we want to do a classification problem we need to make sure our outcome is a factor let's convert the variable reverse to a factor variable in both our training and our testing sets. We do this by typing the name of the variable we want to convert, in our case, train reverse, and then type as.factor, and then in parentheses the variable name, train reverse. And just repeat this for the test set as well. Test reverse equals as.factor test dollar sign reverse. Now let's try creating our random forest again. Just use the up arrow to get back to the random forest line and hit enter. We didn't get a warning message this time, so our model's ready to make predictions. Let's compute predictions on our test set. We'll call our predictions predict forest and use the predict function to make predictions using our model Stevens forest and the new data set test. Let's look at the confusion matrix to compute our accuracy. We'll use the table function and first give the true outcome, test reverse, and then our predictions, predict forest. Our accuracy here is 40 plus 74 divided by 40 plus 37 plus 19 plus 74. So the accuracy of our random forest model is about 67%. Recall that our logistic regression model had an accuracy of 66.5% and our CART model had an accuracy of 65.9%. So our random forest model improved our accuracy a little bit over CART. Sometimes you'll see a smaller improvement in accuracy, and sometimes you'll see that random forest can significantly improve in accuracy over CART. We'll see this a lot in the recitation and the homework assignments. Keep in mind that random forests has a random component. You may have gotten a different confusion matrix than me because there's a random component to this method.